Hey everybody, welcome to another video review. <clears throat> so I've been doing a couple of, uh, you know, predator pieces uh, lately for um, somebody who I like to say is a friend uh, now. We got to know, uh, know each other a little bit through DM, another collector uh, in New York, who's a really big uh, Naren and Joe Dunaway fan and has been, has been very patient for a while. He didn't, I think he even thought that um, maybe I was out of the game or something because it's been so long since I put up a statue review. And so he's been asking so patiently and so nicely. So I, I put up a few, um, you know, Predator kits, uh, which is a niche that I know that some of you are really into and some of others of you could care less about. <clears throat> and I also promised him that I would review Hellbreed, which is one of the major Naren uh, pieces but that one's gonna take a little bit of time, uh, mainly because, I mean, that's upstairs. It's gonna be a little bit nervous business bringing it from upstairs to downstairs where I do most of my reviews. And then it's old, it's over five years, I think. I have to dust it off. Um, so while I kind of work on that a little bit and think about what I wanna say about that particular piece, uh, I'm going to take a break and shift my attention to some other things that I think are uh, pretty cool. So why have I been showing you the this backside of the Slady, okay? Well, uh, for those of you who don't know, this is a painting by a artist named Boris Vallejo, Boris Vallejo. And this is called Leather Jacket. It's one of his most famous and most iconic paintings. And I need to show you this because I'm gonna show you the paint job that John Allred did on a garage resin kit sculpted by Steve West. And for you to sort of appreciate what John has done, you need to get an idea of what the source material looks like, okay? So before going on, who is Boris Vallejo? Well, Boris Vallejo is a uh, gentleman, um, I believe, of Peruvian descent. And he was a very, very famous artist, I would say back in the 80s and 90s, uh, maybe even a little bit before then. Uh, once upon a time, boys and girls, once upon a time, we used to have things called books, okay? And these were things that actually had paper that you can feel, that you can open, that you can read in your hands. That's what bookmarks are for, so that you wouldn't lose your place in these remarkable things that you actually felt with your hands. And these books had covers, and the covers would often be used to sell the book, even though one of the oldest sayings or you know one of the oldest yeah, sayings in all time is don't judge a book by its covers the reason that warning exists is because a lot of people do judge books by their covers and these covers sell books and boris vallejo um, was one of the most famous artists that sold science fiction and fantasy Books. He did the covers for these books. He did paintings for them. And then these paintings were commissioned by publishers and then used for the covers of books. And they sold a lot. Now, a Leather Jacket was never a cover of a book. Uh, obviously, you don't really want this in you know, the general population, uh, the cover of a fairy tale, for instance. But this was, um, you know, art that he created for portfolios, for, um, for books, things like that, you know, for like books of art. And, you know, Boris was known for his amazing ability to depict anatomy, both female and male. He had this very distinctive art style. Um, this is not necessarily safe for work. Uh, I don't find, you know, his paintings to be obscene or gratuitous. Uh, I find them to be actually quite artistic, quite beautiful. Uh, and if you Google his work, you can see a wide selection and some of his stuff is like truly iconic. Um, he painted some of the best covers for instance, like Doc Savage, for the Pope uh, novels. 
he painted a, almost all of the you know significant Conan the Barbarian uh, book covers that I remember, and so you know he was a big deal. And he, his wife uh, Julie Bell, was an amazing uh, or is an amazing artist. I think I think they're both alive. They're both uh, a little bit older now, uh, more advanced in years, but they're, uh, hopefully they're both alive and doing well, you know, being healthy. But Julie Bell was the model for a lot of his. Um, you know, his work for the female inspiration. And she uh, is an amazing artist in her own right. So if you want to, again, um, Google Julie Bell, Google Boris Vallejo, you'll have some knowledge uh, of their stature, okay, as artists um, uh, in the 80s and, and 90s. So there is the, that's the setting, guys. That's the, the context and the background for this resin kit. And then there was a guy named Steve West. Um, again, he's probably quite a bit older now and he was active, I'm gonna say a good, gosh, 25, 30 years ago. Uh, old school guy, an amazingly talented sculptor. You know, he was there in the good old garage resin kit days where you would actually sculpt and mold and cast these babies in a garage. And he put together a portfolio of some of the most classic, timeless, and awesome garage kits. And I own quite a few of them. And some of them, let me tell you, are super hard to get a hold of. Maybe, I dare say, even impossible to get an original these days. Um, I think in another related video called Tattoo, where it showed a dragon tattoo coming to life. I mean, that resin kit was just gone. Uh, I actually was just trying to track him down, asking, asking, and finally, um, I got a hold of somebody who knew him, and they just gave me his number, and it was like his home number. Like, no kidding, random guy, that's me, wound up calling Steve West, the sculptor of this kit I really wanted, at his home, and like, his wife answered, and she was like, super sweet, super nice, she was like, oh, you know, I'm so glad that you uh, are an admirer of, you know, his work. He'll be so pleased to know this and find out. I literally left her my number, my, um, you know, email, and I don't even know how I paid him. I, I think I paid him via PayPal, but I'm not even sure whether I, or maybe I just mailed him a check, whatever. And he actually, um, you know, casted a copy of the kit from the original mold in his garage, literally his garage, and mailed it to me. I mean, it was one of the most sort of wholesome and um, nostalgic interactions I've ever had in my life. Because as all of you may know, just things are a lot different in today's day and age, just a whole different world. But that was Steve West. And um, I've done, I think, a couple of his pieces uh, I've reviewed, but I still have you know, some that I would really like to go over. And uh, John Albright recently finished a series of four. And these four um, resin kits are all based off of the art <clears throat> of Boris Vallejo. They were very, very famous at the time. A lot of collectors um, wanted them. And they're still, I think in my opinion, still very highly sought after today. And the most rare kit was the leather jacket kit. And I will give you the other ones. Uh, I'll review the other ones like Amazon's Pet and uh, Vampire's Kiss. And I think other though, I think the other one was Jungle Queen or like Amazonian, Amazon Queen or something like that. But I'll review those. But I wanted to review a leather jacket because this was, you know, the most recent one that was done by John that got shipped to me. So the thing, the iconography uh, of this work of art is that you see sort of the fantasy element is this, you know, like lizard monster, this beast. And of course, this very erotic, um, suggestive photo of a woman. And as she's turned with her back towards you, but, um, you know, she's obviously doesn't have her pants on. She has the, the, the you know, the thigh high leather boots. Uh, ironically, what Selena Kyle, Catwoman, <laughs> reminds me of what Catwoman was wearing. And she's got this leather jacket, but nothing in between, okay? And then she has this sort of brown, uh, almost auburn, auburn hair. And you can, just, you can just barely see the hint of her face uh, from this angle. 
And just from this hint, you feel like, you know, that she's a beautiful woman. Okay, just from the little, just the, the little hint of the shadows, barely turning, a part of you wants to see more, obviously. And that's sort of the, the genius of this composition, um, is that it kind of leaves you wondering what her face looks like, what the other side of her looks like. There's that air of mystery, right? That tinge of mystery to it. So it is, again, a very striking work of art. Very, very famous. Um, this I found this from a website called MeArtu or MeArto.com. It's from a guy whose mother actually has, I, I, I think, a 50... Um, no, was a 50 centimeter or 50 inch um, actual canvas of this hanging in her house. And uh, she kind of wanted to know how rare it was. So in any case, here is the control art. And now uh, to give you an example of what Steve West did and what John already uh, did to paint it up. Um, this is what we're seeing here. So this is the actual a resin. I'm just kind of comparing the two. So uh, you can see that, um, you know, that's pretty, pretty remarkable work by, by Mr. West here. Um, from the angle of the, the leather jacket, from the way she's looking, um, from the beast, I mean, it's almost like a perfect uh, sculptural reproduction of the artwork so that's in my opinion pretty stunning here's another look this is the original art and then this is his sculpt okay um, so there you have it let's take a look a little bit closer so again check out the the texture of her boots her thighs her thigh high boots and then you know the skin tones of her flesh and then the jacket. Now I put her against a white backdrop just to kind of hopefully maybe brand a little bit more detail, um, but hopefully you can you can tell that you know the jacket's not just black. Um, there's some brown highlights to it, which is just like the brown highlights you see on the picture. So you know John Allred did a phenomenal job doing that. I mean he. He really took the control art and really sort of um, did a stunning uh, translation of that in this paint. And, you know, like black jackets, leather jackets are kind of boring to paint. I mean, it's all just, you know, kind of one color. How do you make it interesting? Well, he showed you how, you know, both the painting showed you how and John showed you how with all these different highlights and very subtle mixes. Um, the hair, you know, maybe it's the same way. Uh, brown and from this angle you, you get the same kind of hint of that face as you do right over here okay so I did ask him to give the um, the beast with this lizard monster or whatever you want to call it I'll call it the beast I did ask John to give the beast just a little bit more punch a little bit more variation um, of course here it's bathed by this kind of unnatural light and it kind of really washes out the beast. I didn't really want to have that copied completely. And so he, of course, you know, um, did what I asked and he made that happen. Okay, so uh, I am going to now close this. The power is about to be out anyways. So we're gonna do that. And then we're gonna now focus on this uh, resin kit. This is, I think, eighth scale, smaller even than sixth scale. You know, that's the way garage kits were back then. They were small, not quite very ambitious, uh, hopefully easy to uh, mold, easy to cast. It was distributed in pretty uh, limited numbers. Uh, uh, this is an artist proof, believe it or not. Uh, one of only 25, uh, very, very rare. I have another two versions of this, uh, but they're the regular kits. Um, and maybe someday I'll have John actually revisit it and paint it and have some fun with it and maybe give us different color leather jackets. I was, always thought that she would look pretty neat with like a red little leather jacket, let's just say. You know, certain little things to kind of have fun with it. But here we go, I'm gonna now take her and then we're going to turn her around. So we're gonna be able to finally see what 
we couldn't in the painting, but because of course she's sculpted, you're gonna be able to see her uh, from the other side. So here she is again, just one last final look. This is, in my opinion, just an almost perfect uh, 3D version of the control art brought to life. So Steve West deserves a lot of credit for doing that. This is again, um, one of his best pieces in my opinion. So let's turn her around. Let's take a look at what she now looks like. So here she is. You can display from a variety of angles. So this is one way of doing it. This is another way. So here, you know, Steve West did have to take some liberties. He had to um, sort of ask himself, well, now that we have to show what, what there is to see, like, what can I do? And so we'll kind of focus now on the base. So um, John kind of created this very classy uh, wooden base. And then this is actually the resin um, base that comes with the, the figure. You can see the sort of the, the detailing of the veins. Here's the, the claw. This is the actual belt buckle that you can kind of interchange. I'll show you that later. But here he is. The tongue is actually metallic. It's actually malleable. Um, and again, John did a phenomenal job painting it. You can actually see almost a glistening of the membranes. And then he gave this be some glowing red eyes. Looks really nice. He added in a little bit of green texturing. You can see the scales backing up a little bit, looking at it from the top. Here you can see the musculature of the legs, the tail, all the way over here. So, you know, that's that's the advantage of sculpture, right? You can see everything, you can go all around. Check out, again, some of the detailing here. It's nice. Very, very nice. And then try to get this angle right over here. Kind of, again, showing you the wrinkles, the skin, and a little bit of, a little bit of modeling. Um, you know, he's trying to remain true again to the art, but give it a little bit more texture, so to speak. You can see the collar here, the vein work. So remember guys, this is 30 years old, 30 years old. And so finally, you can come down here, take a look at the boots, the stilettos, the, the kind of the, the wrinkles that are sculpted in place. So, you know, this is not Selena Kyle. Not J and D level, but for 30 years ago, this is pretty darn good. You know what I'm saying? Pretty darn good. This is all by hand. No digital sculpting, no computers, just freehand. He's just sculpting this by hand, literally, you know? And then finally, taking a look at the front of the jacket, you can see this necklace. You see the front. Let's look at the detail of that leather jacket all the way around. Here we go. Look at the buttons, all the way down to the fingernails and the hands. There's even like a belly button ring. I don't know, I mean, I think, did John add that? Sometimes, you know, that these paint masters, um, they definitely plus their projects. But yeah, check all that out. And then of course the earring and then her face right over here. There you go, let's go back up. All right. So this is definitely not for kids, I guess. <laughs> I think it's PG-13, right? PG-13 borderline rated R. Here's the, the straps of the leather jackets placed tastefully to conceal uh, parts of our anatomy. Although you can just get a hint of it if you look at it from the side. So this actually can be removed and replaced with this belt buckle if you want to, you know, showcase, well, I mean, everything, I suppose. Okay, she is, as far as that goes, uh, she is anatomically correct. She has scoped it to be anatomically correct. So there you have it. And now I'm going to, as usual, begin the turnaround. Uh, we're gonna start turning it around, so please excuse the 
the background noise as I talk over this. So what are my overall thoughts of leather jacket? Um, well, I think in terms of the historical um, context of it, in terms of what Steve did uh, as a beginning, when you look at the, the reference art, I think it's a you know, amazing uh, work of art. I think it's an amazing uh, sculpt, a definite blast from the past, a treasure of the old garage kit. If you want to get a snapshot of garage kit history, okay, this is why you have your, I don't know, $3,000 ownage molded and casted uh, masterpieces. This is why you have you know, say a sideshow premium format Grey Hulk that's selling for 10 grand. All of this craziness that's in the statue hobby today, it started from garage kit resin projects like these. Sideshow sold 12 inch figures and Sideshow's, um, you know, founding fathers grew from garage kit resin people. These are just people, normal people with jobs who happen to have an um, extraordinary amount of talent and as a hobby, would basically sculpt a subject matter that was near and dear to their hearts, whether it was from Star Wars, or whether it was a superheroes, whether it was a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or Disney. They would create works of art because back then, 35 years ago, 30 years ago, that stuff just wasn't available. It wasn't there. There wasn't even a necessarily a figure. Um, and so they created what they wanted. And then, uh, as sort of a favor and to share among other like-minded individuals that they would meet on forums, um, other fans, they would create a few extra copies and maybe gift them to each other or just sell them for a very cheap price for $100 or, that, or here and there. And those people would uh, prep them, prime them, build them, paint them. That's the origin of the statue hobby. That is the origin of what we enjoy uh, today, of the huge multi-million dollar business uh, that's changed people's lives you know that we look at today so this is blast from the past this is these are the artists who created the work like this uh, and steve west was one of the best out there uh, and so even 30 years later uh, i think that absolutely you can admire the way he sculpts anatomy the way he sculpted those buttocks the breasts the wrinkles uh, of the jacket this is still even today in today's by today's standards you know i don't think steve has anything to be embarrassed about it's still crazy good if you look at that and how he was able to translate the back of that you know iconic uh, picture iconic painting by boris vallejo and, re and recreate it so perfectly and then he had to go ahead and sculpt the other side while keeping to sort of the um he has to he had to keep to the essence of the painting stay true to it he couldn't be completely explicit he had to be suggestive sexy erotic but not explicit and so you can see that you know uh, within that confines he did what he you know he was very successful he gave you the the body in the front but you know not completely nude the jacket was placed or put on in a fashion that is consistent with what you see on the back. Of course, she has no pants, so you can't do anything about that. You have to sculpt that, you have to show that. But then he hit it a little, a little tastefully with that strap. Uh, so again, I, I think as far as that goes, I mean, this is really amazing. Uh, and of course, John Allred uh, took it to the next level by bringing that sculpt to life with his paint, uh, with the, his way of uh, painting skin tones, doing the actual jacket itself, uh, and then, of course, working on the beast. And it kind of just shows you how versatile John is. You know, John is one of those guys who's been around so long, who's so experienced, and who, he just knows all the tricks in the book that he can do anything. And he can do anything well. You want tattoos? He's got tattoos. You want girls? He's got girls. You want skin tones? Yes. You want predators? He'll give you a predator. You want monsters? You want superheroes? You know, John Allred... He's done them all. He can do them all, you know. 
and this kind of in a in a uh, sort of a microcosm or just in the capsule to show, showcases what he can do. He's giving you skin tones, uh, you know, he's giving you a clothing highlights, and then right next to that, all of that, he gives you a you know basically a kick-ass monster beast, green, yellow, different shades, um, doing all of that stuff, right? So and then he basically hand a uh, custom makes a base for you as well because he was like hey Dennis you know this is a really really old kit I know it's one of 25 supposedly artist proof but it's kind of incomplete I mean it's like you know it's a little bit beaten up it didn't even come with a base um, so I'm just gonna make one and that's kind of how John is you know, he again he, he can do anything in, in this hobby uh, for you so I'm gonna get a little bit closer in so you get to sort of see it so anyways now if you want to nitpick Yes, there is some crudity to it. By crude, I mean, you know, this is not computer printed. It doesn't have the, um, you know, perfection of digital sculpting and 3D printing. All of this has got to be by hand. The material, you know, the resin is just literally garage level resin. It is what it is. You can see little tiny imperfections here and there, uh, a little, you know, kind of, resin pockmark here or there um, the level of detail of course you know, has since been surpassed although i would say that this is pretty solid detail still you know so in terms of all of these things yeah sure you can you can nitpick a little bit here but look at those beautiful hands and the nails and all that you know so it doesn't i don't know if it it can withstand inspection from within a centimeter away you can sort of begin to see the little bits of resin but you know, from a little bit further back, right? That's a very good buttocks, good anatomy. Jacket's still really, really good. So yeah, there are basically some limitations inherent in the age of this um, project. Um, in terms of her, of her face, uh, definitely portrait work has advanced quite a bit uh, in the, over the last uh, 30 years. So I would say that this face is you know, is average, uh, certainly a bit crude. I mean, they go a little bit close here. You can tell that this is, you know, it is what it is. You're gonna be able to see something pretty similar in some of the other kits. Uh, it's okay, but again, she has sort of an almost an overly plastic look. She kind of looks like somebody who's had a little bit too much plastic surgery, if that makes any sense. Um, she has, you know, the kind of very, very um, significant uh, operated on nose almost, the high cheekbones. So there's a little bit something almost unnatural about all of this. Um, or maybe the reason that women who have had too much plastic surgery look like this is because that's kind of what you look like. You know, th those women look like a natural. They look unnatural because they look like their nose was sculpted you know, by, by a human being instead of a natural nose. So you can definitely get an idea for this type of nose. It's a little bit artificial. And the face, again, a little bit crude. Uh, there's definitely way more beautiful uh, faces out there. Um, for instance, let me give you a little bit of an example. So if we go back here, there's a leather jacket too. So later on, um, Boris Vallejo, because of the popularity of leather jacket, painted another one. Uh, leather jacket too, painted by Boris Vallejo and Julie Bell. This painting, you can see that this is uh, her picture. So. It's really uh, amazing because I think that this painting was actually inspired by Steve West's kit. So Steve West sculpted leather jacket uh, because he was inspired by uh, Boris Vallejo and then inspired by Steve West, Boris Vallejo went and painted, um, you know, painted a, uh, how can I say this, uh, a sequel to uh, leather jacket essentially off of what Steve sculpted. So I think that was you know, pretty cool because you can definitely see here now the the way the, the head is, the way the jacket is. It's basically the same. Um, of course, Boris decided to cover up the naughty bits a little bit, but definitely the way the jacket lies on the breast, the way her hands are, and the way the, the monster is, is just like, uh, just like this, right? So I thought that that was actually uh, quite neat. And of course, Boris made the face way more beautiful because that's what he's known for. Uh, so yeah, you know, uh, 
uh, I'll admit it that absolutely there is some cru uh, crudity uh, to the sculpt and the face can be better, can definitely be better. Um, another thing is more of like, a, I think, inherent philosophical limitation of the piece, which is that one of the things that made the original uh, source art so magical is you did only get to see her backside. That was kind of the point. And in a way, in showing you now everything, you kind of destroyed that allure. You've sort of destroyed that mystery. Uh, now you get to see her front part. And while it's titillating and it's nice to see her breasts and her, you know, uh, pubic area and all of that. And it's kind of cool to see this, you know, like nice uh, tongue and see what the beast looks like from the other side. I feel like, you know, yeah, you do sort of destroy a little bit about the point and what made the original such uh, an iconic work of art and what made it so striking and so memorable in the first place is that sense of mystery. And now that by definition, by necessity is gone because you have to, you know, this is a 3D sculpt. You can by, by nature, by the nature of the art medium, you can walk around it. You can appreciate it from all different angles. Steve had to show you what was previously only hinted at. Um, and then with the second painting, uh, of course, Boris translated that into uh, another, you know, work of art, another painting. Uh, but I would, I would argue that Leather Jacket Two is lesser than Leather Jacket. Uh, it's lesser because it's simply not as interesting. So now, great, we see the front. She's a beautiful lady. We knew she would be beautiful when we saw her from behind, but now we see her face. Yeah, she's beautiful, but now she's just another beautiful girl next to a monster. And Boris and Julie have given us literally a hundred of those. Uh, blonde hair, red hair, uh, different, uh, there's wings, there are fairies, there are mermaids, uh, there are damsels in distress, there's barbarians, there's dragons. We've seen like the sexy girl next to the monster, you know, I mean, so many times and of course Boris and Julie were instrumental in making kind of like you know making the foundations for those they're the ones who sort of set the the stage for that they created the class that everybody aspired to so yeah they made that genre famous they pushed that genre to the limits but because they did that a leather jacket from the front a leather jacket where just you get to see everything is not as interesting, if that makes any sense. Okay, and I'm gonna show you three other kits in this series. Um, they, you know, Steve decided to take three of Boris's, I think at that time, most famous, most iconic uh, paintings, and he challenged himself to uh, create resin kit versions of them. And all, th all of them, all four of them are amazing, but you're gonna see the other three as well. And you can compare and contrast yourself decide which one you know is your favorite or which one is good uh, but my favorite has always been a leather jacket because of that original uh, painting it was just very very striking uh, a close second would be vampire's kiss for the same reason because you know from the art you never get to see the lady's face you only can imagine what you know the vampire is doing what that you know what the the, the monster is doing so there you have it. Uh, this is very simple. It comes in literally three or four pieces, not like the 95 pieces that so many modern day statues come from. The intricacy, the complexity, it's not there. You know, this is way more simple and it's from a simpler time in statue collecting history. But I would argue that as you're looking at this, as she just gently turns around and you think about that control art and that reference art I showed you, that I think there's a, a great deal of beauty uh, and a great deal of uh, artistic, um, you, know, uh, you know, artistic beauty and artistic integrity uh, in something as simple as this as well. Um, just take a look at the way the shadows are, look at the way the shadows are against the white, look at how she's just certainly turning around. So just you know, one last sort of panoramic shot of how everything looks. So this is a leather jacket, okay? Sculpted by Steve West, painted by John Allred, and it's inspired from the control art, from the reference art of Boris Vallejo and Julie Bell. So I hope that that was uh, interesting for you to kind of hear about a, a little tiny adventure into the uh, the birth of statue collecting. And um, until next time, where I might 
I might show you a few more from the series that are more easily accessible for me. Uh, and then after doing a few of those reviews, I'm going to work on Hellbreed because uh, that one is going gonna, is gonna to take a little bit of time to do correctly. So I think maybe for the next couple, I might show you Vampire's Kiss. Uh, definitely I'll show you the, um, the other one, the, the blonde lady with the, the two dragons. So I'll show you those and then we'll get to Hellbreed. Alrighty. So until next time, I'm going to turn this thing off. We're going to put her back into the original position right over here. So from this angle, perfect. You would swear that this was actually the painting come to life. And until next time, when I show you Vampire's Kiss, do take care.